it's time to have a look at every single trading card that I own as of July 2023. I don't really know what the structure to this video is going to be, apart from I, I got these out of storage and I wanted to have a look to see what I had because I do plan on going to the Cardiff card show in September and I know there's cards that I need and I'm really bad at writing down what I need in order to complete sets. So I'm just going to grab a folder and we're just going to have a look. I've also got some PSA slabs, which we'll see at the very, very end. But first of all, we've got a train on uh, folder binder with modern full art cards in by the looks of it. I think this is full. Yeah, this one is completely full. So we've got some of Scarado's cards. Dittos. Full arts and half arts, maybe. There's some cards in here that I think are actually worth grading. And I think that in the future, my modern collection will be more graded cards only, rather than cards like this in a binder. Because the Gyarados EX, I'd love to have graded. I don't think it'd be a 10. But I'm fairly certain that I pulled that myself. Relatively common EX and GX cards. Bit of uh, Generations. Zapdos, Moltres and Articuno GX. I'd love to get that graded as well. Um, it's mainly the full arts, you know. The full arts and the, the textured cards are the better ones. The Butterfree VMAX just looks amazing. Snorlax. Oh, that. The... Uh, the promo card SM210, which I think was in an ETB from memory. I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But there's there's lots and lots and lots of the same. Actually, thinking about it, I think I've got another one of these folders somewhere. I'll dig that out for the next collection video update in like a year's time or whatever. Because I get asked a lot. Oh, please do a update as to your collection. And this is me trying to do it on my daughter's bed while she's at preschool. Nice Vaporeon VMAX there. Loads of Laprises. I think I couldn't stop pulling them at one point. A nice Alakazato. Pikachu. Rainbow. Not the camera. Lovely. Anything else noteworthy? I mean, that Mew does look nice. And then another <laughs> another few Mews. Jolteon VMAX. Butterfree VMAX. Butterfree VMAX. And then Charizard V Star, Moltres V, Glary Moltres. That's my little binder done. Uh, we're now going to move on to this binder, which I kind of just showed them at the very, very start and then put them all, well, closed them all and just sort of shuffled them. So I don't actually know what's in this until I open it. And it is, oh, I love these Tops Chrome. So I got a lot of Tops Chrome cards in a job lot a couple of years ago for. An insanely good price and I had a lot of doubles and I show I sold the doubles for I think five pound a piece I think at the time I I put them up for six or seven pound each and they weren't worth a lot and then the Logan Paul thing happened we had a mini boom in the collector sphere and it all went a little bit crazy for a while and I I took a lot of money for what I had and I regret it ever since because a massive part of me still does not like selling Pokemon cards but this is the complete topped chrome set so there's different variants of these you can get like spectrochromes and things like that there's like different rarities but so this is essentially the base set this is the non-hollow set of the tops chrome and I had to buy a few more on eBay in order to complete the set but I'm so glad that i did last time i checked it's worth about two grand this set but i'd never sell it it just looks too damn good again i'd love to get it graded and to have a complete gem mint 10 set but it's very expensive to do i mean you're talking 16 pounds a card to grade and then i think i've got a psa 10 for fable which i'll show at the very end with all the other psa cards and I think that when I bought that, that was like 50, 60 quid. And it's now worth about double that. So to try and replace the cards that I don't get as a PSA 10 is going to be very, very difficult. Or, well, not difficult, just very expensive. So it would normally go up to, I think, Gollum. Or maybe Rapidash. 
I think it's Rapidash. And then the second release, the second series, is Onwards. But it, it's just full of shiny goodness. And it's one of the reasons why I started reselling. is so that I could afford to buy things like this. And find things like this. But look at that. Flareon artwork is lovely. And then Mew. Look at that. Lovely. And there's a few cards at the end as well. So we've got some Pikachu's vacation cards in there. And that nice little set. There you go. That's another binder done. What else do we have? This one is... Uh, okay, this is non-hollow Watsy Rares. So no matter the condition, if I find a Watsy non-hollow for a half-decent price, I'll just pick it up. I'll just buy it. Let's move that back a little bit to there. And it'll just go into a binder. This one is... This one's full of just Watsy non-hollows. We've got movie promos. We've got Jungle. Any first editions on that page? No. We've got an e-reader Fero. But also, with it being that if I try to complete sets, I've got the rare cards ready to go into the sets. Uh, is there anything notable there? Not really. Nice beating up Pidgeot on the bottom right. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't let go of these cards because these are just pure nostalgia. This takes me back, admittedly, the reader cards, not so much. But it just takes me back to, you know, when things were a lot easier and cheaper and a lot more carefree. Any other? Uh, there's like base set two. Possibly one of the rarest cards so far was just a base set two card. I don't know if there's any fourth prints in here, actually. I don't think there is. Team Rocket. A nice dark Charizard there. Uh, Pikachu promo. No. Oh, Mrs. Cloyster from Gym Heroes. Yeah, there's not a, not a lot of variety in that, was there? Let's see if there's anything in the other one. What's in this one? This one is... Oh, it is another full binder. And I know I've got a load of spares and singles just sitting around waiting for me to get another binder. So what do we have? Dark Girl Trio, very beaten up Articuno, very beaten up. Worth absolutely nothing, some of these, but oh, Dark Blastoise, what a card. Kingdra, it's not my favourite Kingdra artwork. I'm trying to think which one is my favourite Kingdra artwork, but I can't think of it now. For a chest, look, absolutely covered in black spots, that. Absolutely covered. I stopped looking for first editions again. Here we go, first edition Magneton. Beaten up, but it doesn't matter. It's got a home. Promo Zapdos. We've got a Neo Elekid. Base set two Electabuzz. Base set two Kangas Khan down there. I think I should have chosen a better seating position because this is starting to hurt. And I'm only eight minutes in. Oh, there's a whole page. I have space. I can fill it. I presume I got to that point and then I started filling it from the back instead. But I can fill that. So there should be quite a few differences in the next video because this will be full. Promo card. One of the promo cards is really expensive as well. So I've not even got a full set of that yet. Um, and there we go. Dark Charizard at the end. Covered in mud or God knows what. But there we go, got one of those. Next one is... Ah, this is just like the base set of Topps Chrome. Not Topps Chrome, Tops. Not worth a huge amount, but this is the sort of thing that you would find in a binder uh, of collections before the boom. And they'd all be beaten up. They'd all be absolutely battered. And they're not worth a huge amount, but again, it's that nostalgia factor. And it's just a full set. 100% complete. Look at that. Beautiful. This is the, the blue logo print one. So there's different types. There's blue, green, red and black 
I forget which order they came out in. But there we go. And we've got all the TV cards at the end. So yeah, it goes up to Gollum. Then it stops. Then it'll be the next, the next series, the next set. And my woeful promo, Black Star promo collection. So there's one to nine. Then I'm missing 11, 13, 15. There's lots, lots missing. But I plan to write all these down of what's missing so that if I do find any at a card show, I'll have everything available in my pocket and hopefully fill a couple of gaps. Now, I would imagine, I think this is the hollow version of the same top set. Yes, it is. Now, this is not complete. I think I'm missing two cards from this. So with the different print runs of the tops, there was different effects. So there was one of the other print runs had like a a fire symbol in the background or like a raindrop. And there was just different effects for every one. Look, I'm missing a almost in sand slash on that one. A girl bat, no zoo bat on that one. Doug Trio. So again, these cards that won't cost a lot, but when you're buying them individually and you've got to pay postage on top, and it's highly unlikely that you find someone selling that golem was in a different position on the last one, wasn't it? Missing a weeping bell and a tentacruel. So yeah, trying to find someone who's selling all of them, you end up paying quite a lot for postage. Oh, I forgot about these. A long time ago, these were really cheap. These were not very expensive per booster box. And now they are ridiculous. So thanks for got the Charizard, which is one of the most expensive cards in this set. And then I sold all of the non hollows pretty cheap, um, all to one person. And it turns out they did it because PSA suddenly decided to start grading them. So, yeah, it's like proper old school original artwork. I mean, just look at that. And these are old. I think these are 90, 97, 98, might even be 96, you know. So I'm missing a couple. I think that one there is supposed to be a Pikachu, which is going to be one of the most expensive ones to, to replace as well. So we're missing Venusaur, uh, Pikachu, and I think Moltres. And last time I checked, Moltres was about £150. Yeah, I'm sure that's Moltres that's supposed to go there. So kind of regret not filling that before the boom, but it is what it is. We're now going to go on to this binder which is a binder you're not supposed to store cards in because the rings damage the cards inside but i keep on forgetting to buy extra binders and i've just bought another three but i need all of those for the card show so here we have an incomplete fourth print base set and you tell the difference because at the bottom here i would say 1999-2000 and the fourth print set was predominantly released i believe in the uk and australia but the issue with it is they would often put the normal base set holofoil and rare cards inside a fourth print pack so even if you open a fourth print pack now which i think they're four five hundred pounds a piece there's no guarantee that the rares and hollows are actually going to be fourth print which makes it rather difficult so yeah this is very this is very empty and again, this should not be stored in this sort of binder, I'm well aware. But it oh, and these are generally quite lighter in colour as well. If you used to put two of them next to each other, generally speaking, these are slightly like a couple of shades lighter. But I need to get these in a proper binder, a hundred percent. I just don't know what sort of binder I want, whether I want a top loader one or not. Because when I first did this, I don't think the top-loaded binder was even an option. Now we've got the, the bulk, which is just a commons. Which is looking quite quite healthy, to be fair. The uncommons, not so much, because some of them are an absolute pain to find. Oh no, the, the uncommons are okay. They're not bad, they're not bad. It could be worse. So yeah, then we've got commons, then the trainers... And then there's no there's no energy cards. 
No, that's because we're not there yet. There we go. There's the energy cards. I got confused because I I haven't put cards on each side. So there we go. That's that. That's the fourth print. Then we started off on Shadowless, which I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to pay up for it. So the, the idea was that during my reselling career, as it were, I would just keep on finding them and be able to put them into the folder. And I don't think I've found a Shadowless card in about four years. So this is looking very, very empty. But again, the idea is to eventually get the complete Shadowless base set. It's just going to take a very long time to get there. Here we have a jungle set. I think it's complete. It must be. But for some reason, it's not in its own binder yet. And these are pretty beaten up. In fact, I don't even think these are sleeved. So these must have been in here for a very, very long time. And why is that? What's happened there? So yeah, these aren't even individually sleeved. This is insane. Okay, hopefully when I upload this, I, I'll think, oh, hang on. Make a note, James. Next time you do an order of some binders, is um, order a couple of extra and a few hundred penny sleeves because the, the <laughs> there's another jungle set. And that's going to be complete as well. Unlimited, though. Look at that. It's just, oh, the nostalgia. I can't wait for my eldest to be like into cards, which it will inevitably happen. Like we're we're still watching the original Pokemon series. We're on Orange Islands at the moment, but again, I'd love a complete graded set, which will one day happen. Then that's the end of Jungle. Then Fossil. This looks like it's going to be complete as well. If all the hollows are there, it's going to be. That is 1999-2000, that one. I think that's from a deck. I think that's slightly different. It's got a different hollow foil pattern to the ones that were in the um, in the booster packs. I have to double check that. That magneton looks well weird from down here. The colours look completely off. And then what's at the end of this? Oh, it's base set two. So base set two was released. Base set two, I've not done very well on it at all. Base set two was released after, definitely after Jungle and Fossil. It may have been a little bit later than that. And it was supposed to be like the best of the best at that time, all combined into one. Now the holofoil patterns are better. Bad example with Zapdos there. But they are supposed to... Well, I think they're, they're better. But again, fairly hard to come across. So the idea is that at some point, I will be completing the base set too. I've got a lot of notes to make. Uh, the back end's looking okay. Oh no, that's there. See, no, that's missing a lot too. That's missing loads, actually. So I've got, I'm going to put that to one side. I'll put that back properly later. Oh, this is so uncomfortable. Now we have a big binder, which this is a base set. This is one whole complete base set. Now, I might change this over for a top loaded version at some point. But so all of these are double sleeved. So they're in perfect sleeves and then they're in black sleeves. Let's try and move that along a little bit. But they're so big, these folders. You can't really get it all in one shot. That's just the commons. We've all seen the commons a, a hundred thousand times. Then at the end of this base set, we've got another base set. Because what's better than one base set is having two. But again, the, the end goal would be to have a completely PSA graded set which i need to up my reselling game to be honest to invest in these more i think it's only two in here then i presume all that is going to be empty yeah so lots of room for even more base sets 
I could put jungle in there, the two jungles, but they're a lot smaller. I don't know. And there's a fossil in there as well, wasn't there? I don't know what I'm going to do. I want them to have their own individual binder, ideally. And then this is this is all Watsy holofoils. Again, any condition. If I see them cheap, oh, I'll pick them up. And they just live in here. So we got a nice base set Charizard. That Venusaur is, is completely messed up. Blastoise. Nice Blissey from Neo. Dark Blastoise, believe it or not, that is a holofoil. It's just not got a lot of holofoil on it. Charizard EX from... I want to say Leaf... No, it's not Fire Red Leaf Green. What's the other one? I can't picture it. Yeah, see, that's a different holofoil pattern. That's just holofoil. There's no actual pattern behind it. That's the one that should be in the binder, I think. Uh, nice, nice. The original Moonbrion. Then we've got Politoed. Houndoom. Steelix, first edition. A very beast up Hitman Chan up there with creases in the corners. Charizard Level X, very nice. A base set Zapdos. Pre release Gyarados. Just relaxing. How could you not look through this and not just be in Zen? Dark Tyranitar. I guess it's another really dark. Oh, you can't see it. A really dark color foil there. Kingdra. Another Charizard. That Pichu is mint. That is. That is grade worthy. It's a little bit of fluff in there, but we should be okay with that. I think I might take that out at some point and add that to the grade pile. We got a, a base set two Charizard, which I know wasn't in the folder of the base set two stuff, but I know that I'm nowhere near completing the set. So there's no point in taking such a beautiful card out of the holofoil uh, binder until I'm closer to, uh, to completing the base set two. We've got a nice reverse Kabuto from Legendary Collection. Legendary Collection was not a thing when I was still collecting. I, like the first time round, that had completely passed me by as a kid. Oh, man. This, this just reminds me of sitting in the back of my mum and dad's car. And I think they bought theme decks and they thought that they were buying booster packs. And it was still the best thing in the world. Until my snotty nosed little brother got hold of the cards and probably put bogeys all over them. Oh, look at that. It's just, it's just so nice. I would get all of my grade pile out, but we would be here forever and a day. So as and when they either make it into binders or they get graded, they will be shown off as well. Lugia first edition is battered. So that's actually from a job. We were doing... What was we doing? I can't even remember. And there was just a bag of, of old Pokemon cards there that used to be his sons. And I, like, I, I, showed, I said that I collect those because I had them when I was a kid. And he's like, I'll just take them. And I offered the, the man money for it. And he's like, no, just, just take them. I'd rather they get loved again. And it is... Just wish that I could have it on display so I could see it more frequently. And now the big boys. Here we have oh, the PSA cards. So I've got a slab sentinel case. I've not had it very long. But we'll go through card by card. And let's move it over here a little bit. Right. So obviously none of these are for sale. So we've got a... PSA 9, Bulbasaur. I think it's only worth about 40, 50 quid in a 9. But trying to get 10s in these are so hard. I mean, these are, as at the time recording this, these are 23 years old. And they are the sorts of cards where if they were stored on top of each other, they just stick to each other. So I have a lot of them. I wish I had more. And these cost me a small fortune to get graded over time. We have a... PSA 9 Ivysaur. The best one that I own in a Topps Chrome is a Gem Mint 10 Charmeleon. Oh, 
Oh, I've got a call coming through. That's really annoying. You can wait. Sorry for the random stop. I just got really confused as to what my phone was trying to tell me. PSA 6 War Turtle. I don't know why I got such a low grade. And there is a little... I think there's a little bubble like it, that's actually supposed to be on the card just in that corner. And I think they think that's damage. Because that does not deserve a PSA 6. I am actually tempted to resend that. So see on the back here, you've got that little bubble just there. You've got that, but on the bottom, see it just there? And I think they think that's damage. It's really disappointing, that. Butterfree, PSA 9. Kakuna, PSA 9. Raticate, PSA 9. I think I've got two of these. Yeah, they're together as well. Two Spearos. No, hang on. That's a Fero behind it. So Spearow, Gem Mint 10. We have a Fero, Gem Mint 10. Ekins, PSA 9. Arbok, PSA 9. Sandru, PSA 9. Sandslash, PSA 9. Nidoran, PSA 9. Clefable, PSA 10. Now, this is one that I actually bought from someone else who was dealing at the time. And uh, yeah, £50 I think I paid. Bargain in hindsight. Zubat, PSA 9. Oddish, oh, PSA 8. Victory Bell, PSA 9. Tend to crawl, PSA 10. Graveler, mint 9. Gollum, mint 9. Oh, I forgot about this. Now that is proper miscut. Look at that. And that's the back. So you actually see there's the start of another card behind it. That is, yeah, one of my favourite cards that i've got i don't have a lot of miscut cards but there we go miscut uh just a, a normal holofill from tops then these cards i've had for ages so back in the day vintage pokemon uh, booster packs were quite cheap you could buy a psa not a psa what am i on about a base set pack for about 35 pounds i know it's mad isn't it uh, and what I would do is I would save up, which in hindsight, I probably could have just not drank for a month and bought a hell of a lot. Uh, and I did open a lot. It's what's one of the, uh, the first things I did on this channel was opening Pokemon packs all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Well, um, we'll have to wait and see and see whether the prices ever come down and I can travel back in time. But yeah, it's. I was very, very fortunate enough to open up a lot of packs when I was younger. When I was just getting back into it, I had some more disposable income. The dark cards you're about to see, these were all pulled by myself from a booster box. I paid, it was a damaged box. I paid £330 for the box for a first edition Team Rocket booster box. Look at that. And at the time, at the hype, at the the height of the hype, that was about a 25 grand card. Now it's only about a four grand card. But in hindsight, if I'd have known, I'd like to think I would have sold it. But there's something about having a Gem Mint 10 card of a card that you pulled yourself. So in hindsight, I would have sold it for 25 and I would have bought it back now for four and a half. We have a gold bat. Now, the dark cards, they normally grade quite well because they're so dark. They don't have a lot of holofoil on them. But, but look at that. It's just pure nostalgia. Absolutely love it. This one I actually bought. Again, I bought this for £50 a long, long, long time ago. And you can see the difference in the grade numbers. There's a, there's a few 
digits that have uh, have gone. I've got to try and put it back in the right position now. Uh, here comes Team Rocket. Now here we have a card that I'm not really fussed about. It's Gym Challenge, but it is a Gem Mint 10. I think, last time I checked, I think people were asking about 600 quid for it. But I'd rather trade it for cards that I want. I bought this at the London Card Show not too long ago. I think it was last year. So it's a nice Dutch version of the promo card. Gem Mint 10. Oh, these these are big cards. I think it's about 1500 two grand. Poncho Pikachu. Again, this is when it was cheap. It was cheap to buy the, the Japanese products and it was easy. There, there wasn't real competition for it. Let's just grab all these out. I had loads of these and I gave most of them away. <laughs> when I first graded these, me and one other person who used to work for a grading company as well. But before that, we bought the lion's share that were available on eBay. We paid 12 to 15 pounds a card. Then we got them all graded and we owned most of these graded cards. And we couldn't shift the Gem Mint 10s for 50 pounds each. Now they're about five, 600 pound each. So that, that's about 1500 pound in my hands right now. So yeah, I gave a lot of them away. I had seven, PSA sevens, eights, I don't know, maybe no sevens. Had eights, nines and tens. And I gave a lot of them away. Just gave them to people because they're only worth 50 quid. And it was, the gesture was worth more than what the card was. These bad boys are 50 pounds each. I think I've got one graded myself or two graded myself and I bought one. Just a nice Pikachu card. And again, I've got three of them. So I can sell two and not feel bad because I've still got one left. Charizard V from Champions Path and from one of my, my most recent send-offs if it wants to focus for me the Korean 2019 reprint of Legend of Blue Eyes we've got Blue Eyes White Dragon and the 2019 Trihorned Dragon as well and I've got a load more to grade and I've got several Red Eyes Black Dragons so there will definitely be more in this case. Oh, I knocked the camera. When we go through this again. And I think all of these are my spares. No, this is a mixture. Okay, so this is my spare Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is my spare Gem Mint 10 Top Sphero. This is my spare Gem Mint 10 Trihorned Dragon. And then I think all of these, oh, hang on. Some are backwards, some are forwards. Why have I done that? These are spare, I think. So again, bought these in bulk. If these were gem mint, which they're obviously not, they'd be two, 300 pounds each. In their current condition, they're only worth about 30 pounds each. And that's after me spending... 15 20 pounds on grading them so it's a bit of a shame but we'll go for they're just the spares so we'll, we'll move on and we'll show you the actual ones from my collection captain america mint nine carnage oh and these came in three different colors obviously bronze silver and gold and these are the silver ones they're still very nice Mint 8, Daredevil, or near mint to mint 8. Near mint to mint 8, Hulk. Mint 9, Iron Man. Mint 9, Punisher. Mint 8, Scarlet Witch. I love this card. Mint 9, Spider-Man. I love this card too. Mint 9. Venom. Oh, it's just lovely. Mint 9. War Machine. Bear in mind, these are from 1994. It's mad. Oh, and then this as well, which is an ace graded uh, event card from the Cardiff Card Show. 
Um, but yeah, it's a core of cards. And if you spent twenty pounds at the at the store, you got a random graded uh, promo card. And I was lucky enough to get Gem Mint Ten. So I'm very very happy with that because it looks nice. And I've just realised the weight difference. That is definitely heavier. I've not used Ace for a very very long time, but I'm somewhat impressed by that slab. I'm still a PSA guy myself, but there we go. That is my current complete Pokemon collection. And my ankles are absolutely killing me. So I'll see you for an update. 2024? We'll make it a date.